Welcome back to In a Tiny Garden Propagation Series. Today I'll start by pricking out the brassicas that we sowed last week and sowing a couple more brassicas, including a couple early cabbage. I'll also be sowing some peas, some celeriac and celery, some edible flowers, including cornflower and calendula, which are also great for the veg patch. Also some flowers, including straw flowers, for the cut flower patch. And I might be sowing a luffa at the end. One other thing, I'm also gonna start my Brussels sprouts. So let's get started. I ensure the seedlings are ready for pricking out by sitting them in a tray of water until the top of the compost is just moist. So while these carry on, I'll give you an update on what's germinating. So these are the multi-sown pea shoots, spinach, and then the boltardy beetroot. So these will uh, go out soon at the allotment. So watered the ranunculus, gave it, gave it a good soak, and those will start hardening off soon and then be planted out. Those are the peas for pods, the early peas, and those are the sweet peas next to them. The lettuce is coming on. And then indoors we've got the peppers that have germinated, all four of the trifetti, none of the Peter yellow, and two, uh, quite quickly, of the Turkish orange but the Listata de Julia is only just peeking above the soil, but I'm very happy to see at least one because I only want one of each. Onions haven't germinated yet, but the winter savory and the annual summer savory have, so I'll be pricking those out soon. And the parsley just about peeking out, um, which is actually quite quick for me. Um, and then the snapdragons, which are doing uh, really well. I posted about them on Instagram. And the sweet potato is putting on nice new roots, so I'm hoping by next week we'll see the beginnings of some shoots on the top. There's the second one. Which we'll then plant as slips once they grow tall. And I've also got, um, that's just been on the windowsill for a day, uh, pre-moistened some paper towel for the luffa seeds. So that just helps them germinate a little bit. You can also uh, file them with a nail file on the edge uh, to get them started, a bit like you can do with sweet peas, but you don't need to. And then organic ginger is shooting up a little bit, which is great, but not the turmeric. So nothing happening with the turmeric, but I'm going to leave it for a little while longer. Um, but I am eventually going to give up on that. <laughs> and then out to go and grab the brassicas after they've been sitting in the water. So they'll be nice and easy to prick out into their own modules all five varieties. So before I get started pricking out the brassicas, I just wanted to say that next week I will be sowing my tomatoes. So because my tomatoes are for outside, I delay planting a little bit. If I had a polytunnel, I'd probably do it this week, but to next week is absolutely fine or the week after. So let's get going. My kettle's boiled for tea. Also just to say, whilst tea is brewing, that I am sowing a lot of seeds, but this is after quite a few years. So every year I kind of add a new plant or flower. So this is quite um, quite a number of seeds. So if you're just starting out, I wouldn't choose nearly this many, maybe you know a handful of vegetables and flowers. Don't feel pressured to sow all the seeds that I'm sowing. Just wanted to make that very clear. So yeah, you can choose what you want. And if you wanna skip through things that you're not gonna grow, then you can by looking in the description below, there's chapters. You can click on whichever vegetable you wanna see and it'll jump to that section of the video. So I hope you enjoy. So I'm using the same 60 cell seed tray as I used for pricking out the lettuce. Um, so these are on the small side uh, as the seedlings are a bit leggy as well. And you can bury the stem uh, a bit deeper as well. Um, so ideally these would be slightly bigger, but never mind. If it means I need to prick them out one more time before planting them out, that's absolutely fine. Maybe my red, red bush tea before I get started. <laughs> hmm. Right, so pricking out is much the same as bulk pricking out lots of things. Uh, first, I get the compost nice and uh, moist, so I know I'd, I don't need to water again after, much after. And then I'm burying the stem sort of as much as I can without damaging it. And again, holding the seedlings by their seed leaves or by a leaf rather than the stem. Because like I said last week, a leaf can regenerate, but the stem can't. So again, gently levering it from the compost. 
nice long nice long stem although one could say a little bit leggy and then these are the early romanesco so i'm going to be planting a few of these now i'm giving away a few as well because i don't have space and uh and i'll be succession sowing those and then these are the purple of sicily cauliflower again not tons of space so i'm glad i'm only I, i've only got six um to deal with in this tray but i probably will only grow three And then that was two rows of the kohlrabi, which is a bit like a radish. You can, you can kind of keep sowing those because they're much quicker than other brassicas. Unlike these purple sprouting broccoli that are in the ground for most part of the year. Then I'm also picking out calabrese, which takes much shorter amount of time. So that's kind of the broccoli that you buy in the shop um, that's actually called calabrese. And then I'm going to sow some new seeds of brassicas. We've got a greyhound cabbage. I love cabbage so much. And this year I'm determined to learn how to make sauerkraut, which I adore, but I haven't, I'm not, I'm not into uh, canning and that sort of thing yet. And this is a lovely one. So you can harvest them at different sizes. So I think I'll plant a few and harvest some smaller and then leave a few on to grow bigger. Same with the Savoy cabbages, which I'm going to sow next. So they can be harvested all different sizes as well. They can get absolutely massive. Um, I had quite a big one last year. But then you can also uh, sow them a bit earlier and harvest them earlier for smaller heads. And then the last two, I'm just going to leave empty for now because of the fact that they germinate better indoors. So I'm about to sow some kaolettes which are like a cross between a Brussels sprout and kale. Um, really pretty, and they keep going for a really long period, so I know people who are still harv harvesting theirs now. And then the Brussels sprouts I grew last year, red rubine, which are so pretty, and I'm still harvesting now. And so once these germinate inside, I'll prick them out into those last remaining rows that you saw on the tray and put them, put them outside joined with, with the rest in the cold frame. And I don't have tons of space for many of these, so I'll probably only grow, I only grew one Brussels sprout plant last year, so I might do two or three this time. And maybe, or maybe four, two of each. Because again, they're in the ground for a really long time. And then I'm going to prick out the dill. Morisco was quite old and hasn't germinated, so giving up on that one. But bouquet and then just the regular dill has germinated really quickly and I should have put these outside sooner because they've gotten quite leggy but we can plant them a bit deeper like we did with the other ones. Now I'm going to try something new this year um, by multi-sowing a few dills. So I'm going to I'm going to do it a couple ways. Um, last year I just did them singly but they're quite kind of measly plants. Uh, so I'm going to try about five in each of these little pots and see how they do. Uh, but I'll try a couple individually as well. And then I'll leave some in the tray, just put them in the cold frame just in case, just in case these fail. So I've got some backups. But these are great kind of fillers in between other vegetables at the allotment. Um, and they deter certain things. But they're in, they're in the same family as carrots and... Is that true? Yes, um, umbellifers. So they're in the same uh, family. So they don't necessarily go well together. They're not going to deter the same pests, but it doesn't really matter. You can plant them wherever you want. So I'm trying not to hold them by the stems, but it's qu quite finicky. And unfortunately, I've completely blocked the camera as well. <laughs> so you couldn't really see. But hopefully you get the gist. Then I make sure that they have a nice water. And then, like I said, I'm going to put these out in the cool frame. But first, I'm going to re-sow a few sweet pea seeds of a couple varieties that didn't germinate. Now, these weren't that old seeds, but the one of the varieties actually says that it has really low germination. So I'm just checking to see if anything's sprouting. Nothing was sprouting, so I'm going to plant a few more. And fingers crossed, we get these two varieties. If not, it's fine. I'll just plant um, more more of the other varieties out when I when I plant them out. So covering with a bit more extra soil, compost, and then 
Mantuca is supposed to be, well, I know it is because I grow it every year, really highly scented one, purpley flowers. Um, so I'm going to sow more of those. One of the packets was really old and I actually have a new packet. So these seeds are from the new packet and then giving everything a nice water before taking it outside. Next, I'm sowing peas for pods outside and marsh too. Peas in their pods uh, are the kind I remember shelling and eating straight away while chatting to my granddad whenever he visited. They're the best allotment snack as well. So I'm filling with multi-purpose compost again and I'm firming really well. This is so that the compost holds together nicely uh, along with the roots of the peas, um, which are quite long roots. Just having a cheeky bit of wine there. So yeah, starting with peas for half the tray and then we'll do mange too in the other half. Aldermen are a nice tall variety and I like to write how tall they're going to get on the label because it just reminds me how tall the support I need will be. Oops. And I've got a friend with lots of hazel, so once it's safe, I'm going to go over and coppice it and use it for pea supports. But until then, I'll use these deep, sturdy root trainers, which will allow them extra time before I need to plant them out. It also avo avoids them being eaten by mice, um, because once they germinate, um, they're not as appealing to rodents. Last year, I did have both pea and bean weevil uh, all over the plants, um, so I went out stalking at dust to catch some of them. They can mostly outgrow it, but um, my poor broad, broad beans already smothered by black aphids uh, had quite a hard time. Um, I also had terrible pea moth in the peas, uh, but not mange too, which I put down to sowing too late. So I'm sowing these nice and early, and then I might do a sowing late so that I can kind of avoid the main pea moth season in the peas. So now onto the manche too, and I've been sowing three per module because I'll plant them out in pairs, so hoping that at least two per cell germinate. So yes, manche too means um, eat all in French. So you can do just that. You eat the whole pod uh, when they're young rather than like peas where you take the peas out of the pods. Um, and I'm sowing purple variety, yellow variety, and some greens. So should be quite a colorful display of my peas this year. So I've firmed them in quite well as well um, to make sure they have nice good contact with the soil. And now I'm going to cover them with a bit more of the multi-purpose compost. So they should be about a centimeter, centimeter to two centimeters down in the modules. And you don't need such big root trainers like these, um, but they do help. And then this took forever to water, um, but I made sure that the water was coming out the bottom so that I knew exactly how much water was in there and how much water um, I could get away with not giving them um, afterwards because you don't want to drown your seedlings either. So, so much compost is packed in here. It took forever to water them, but yes, started to come out the bottom. And then I'll keep these inside until they just germinate and then I'll put them in the cold frame. Now I'm just getting trays ready to sow my celery and celeriac. So I sifted the top layer of the compost because again, it's multi-purpose. And then I'm just gonna fill the bottom of the trays with non-sifted multi-purpose because by the time the roots get there, they can kind of handle a bit more bigger pieces. And then I'll put the sifted stuff on the top I'm just tamping down a bit for good contact. Um, and then the finer stuff on the top because celery and celeriac seeds are really fine. So um, nice fine compost for them to get started in is a good idea. And then I give it a thorough water because again, they're so small. I don't want them to kind of float off. So if you do want to grow celeriac, this, they need to be sown sort of ASAP as they need a long growing season. I've actually not grown them before because they take so long in the ground, but they shouldn't take up masses of space, so I'm going to try them this year. And I love the taste of celeriac. I love celeriac soup actually more than I like parsnip soup. And they produce the most delightfully knobbly swollen stem. Um, and if you don't like a harsh celery or aniseed flavor, it only has a very tiny hint of it. It's, it's delicious. So if you haven't tried them before, maybe go and try them at the shop, and then if you love it, give them a grow next year. Well, you could see how I get on. <laughs> so these are the celeriac. And then I just sowed the Chinese pink celery. And I mostly grow celery to flavor soup, so I don't need to kind of buy a big thing, that part of which gets wasted. And these purple ones are quite, quite strong in flavor and, and small. So that's kind of how I, I use them, works for me. 
And then I'm just mixing a bit of the vermiculite on the top to cover the seeds because again, they're so fine. And I don't need to water because I already did. And then I'll just be putting these not on the heated propagator, but just next to it by the windowsill. So I'm just giving the other two trays of water and apparently myself. Um, and in the first tray, I'm going to grow edible flowers. And then in the second, I'm going to grow uh, so flowers for the cut flower patch. So starting here with the cornflower seeds, which I think are delightful. They're such cute little characters. And they produce bright blue flowers, which are the petals of which are edible. So they look really nice in like a salad and that sort of thing. So fun to play with. <laughs> I love seeds. These are amongst the best. So I'm just sewing thinly on the surface. And these shouldn't take too long to germinate, maybe about a week. And then the next one are calendula, another awesome looking seed, like little sea creatures or something like that. Um, some of these calendula seeds are quite old, so I'm sowing really densely and then we'll just see what comes up. I actually think one of these varieties is so old that it actually might not come up at all, which is fine. I'll just sow more of the one um, in another week of the one that I know are fresh, which is actually these sunset buff, buff ones. And then I'm pressing them into the compost. Just a little bit. And then, yeah, these neon ones are really, really old, like five or six years old. <laughs> and then lovely borage seeds. Again, one, one of my favorite seeds to look at. They're so much fun, like tiny little hedgehogs. Borage are another edible flower, like all the rest in this tray, and petals are great for salads. They kind of have a mild cucumbery flavor. You can eat um, the whole flower head. So they're great in the veg patch. Nice companion plants as well. And I put borage flowers into ice cubes sometimes in the summer, which preserves them nicely. And then cover in vermiculite. I'll give them a water. And then I'll get these started on the heated propagator. And then onto the cut flower container. These are straw flowers, which I'm really excited to grow this year because I know my buddy uh, Katrina, I can actually, maybe I'll link, I'll link her uh, Instagram below. Um, she grew them last year and they were so prolific and wonderful and you can dry the flowers. So they're great for um, cut flowers as well as preserving. These are some Nicotiana seeds and I thought I hadn't sowed these before, but I think the packet was empty or the seeds are so small I couldn't even see them. <laughs> So good luck with that. Um, and then next are these gorgeous little seeds, which are scabiosa seeds. And these are the Sternkugel ones, which are great as a dried flower head. The seed heads are actually more interesting, I'd say, than the actual flowers. So I like to preserve these and then kind of have them in everlasting bouquet around the house. And then the next one is Billy Buttons or Crespidia globosa and these are you find these often in bouquets they're kind of little yellow pom-poms they add kind of structural interest to a bouquet and then the last one is these seeds are so tiny you can barely see them um, this is called the teacup plant and I tried to go it last year with no luck um, so this is the whole rest of the packet so I'm just gonna give it a go and see you actually can't even see them coming off my fingers they're so small so well fingers crossed we'll see we'll see if that works um, the straw flowers in the Nicotiana don't need covering so you just surface sew those so I've only put vermiculite on the other three and then a careful careful water and then those will go on the heated propagator as well And then finally, I'm going to plant uh, Luffa seeds. So I've tried to grow these a couple times and last year I neglected them because, 
well, you can't really eat them. So I guess when time's precious and something's got to give, it was the luffa. Um, I didn't even get it to planting out stage. I kind of left it strangled in a tiny container. Um, so yes, the seeds have been soaking overnight, which just gives them a bit of a head start. And then I plant them on their edge. So you do this with a lot of the curcubit family um, so that they don't rot. So if I planted them flat, the worry is that uh, water could pool on the top and rot them before they germinate. So you just always plant them on their sides. But when we plant some squash later on, I'll show you that as well in more detail, giving it a really good water. So I'm planting um, three in here and then two in the other little container, and then I'll thin them to the strongest seedling. So you grow these until they dry out, you peel the skin off, and then you've got a sponge underneath. So I'm quite excited for that. <laughs> So here's just a shot of my mineral apples I pruned last week. Some iris reticulata blooming in a bulb lasagna. And I'm picking this year's parsley for lunch while the new seeds of parsley germinate. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please click the subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up. And join me next week for the first sowings of too many varieties of tomatoes.